Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Anna, aka Brooke Willow, and today I'm gonna catch you up on all of my spring makes, which today is a lot of knitting, a little bit of sewing, and a lot of spinning too. So let's just jump right into it. been super inspired by the changing of the seasons especially coming into springtime it just feels like everything comes back alive and I made a whole video with my last video of all of my spring inspiration so I've been really motivated to knit on the items that I'm currently working on and then make room to cast on new projects so today I have two finished objects to show you and two new whips that I'm working on. My first finished object is one that isn't new if you're kind of hanging out around this space. I wore it in my last video and I've posted about it on my Instagram already and that is this sweater right here. Oh, that's the back. Here's the front of it. This is the Verso sweater by Albina McLaughlin. And it's just a classic style, basic, awesome knit sweater. Oh, and I have an end that I have to weave in right here. Usually when I'm knitting garments or hats or whatever, I try to find like a really interesting element in the pattern so I don't get too bored with it, whether that be color work or lace work or cable knitting. I always have something, but I've never really knit just a basic sweater for myself before, and I wanted something that's just super easy to pull out of the closet. I can wear it multiple times a week without it being too noticeable, and that's why I decided to make this one. And when choosing patterns, there are a ton of lovely turtleneck basic sweater patterns out there, but I've always wanted to knit an Albina McLaughlin sweater. I've been following her for a few years now. I think she makes really excellent patterns and I loved the versatility of this particular sweater pattern. So there's a lot of different options you can make with the neckline, with the bodice, with the length obviously, and when you buy the pattern she gives you directions for a men's version and a women's version and you can kind of mix and match the elements of each to get exactly what you're looking for and so with this particular one I decided I did want a turtleneck option and I wanted a full length one not like a mock neck one because I discovered that I can fold it twice down to give it kind of a mock neck style if it's just a little too warm to have the full neck but I've been wearing this neckline both ways a lot this season. Colder days I do more of the full turtleneck and then on the warmer days I fold it down to be more of like a mock neck crew neck. And then there were different options for the bodice. There is like tapered, straight, or A-line. I opted for the A-line because I like my sweaters to be a bit more oversized and it gave it the perfect oversized fit with it. And then for the sleeves, I did more of a straight sleeve versus a more tapered or flared out sleeve for this one. So I'm really happy with the full decisions that I made with this particular sweater. Another unique feature of this is that it uses a saddle shoulder on the side, so it just slopes down really nicely and blends into the front and back. And I did like that as an element with this pattern. I do plan on making more versions of these in the future. I probably will make like a crew neck version next. I could even make Mitch a basic pattern with it. I just like all of the different possibilities that is created with it. And I really liked her writing style too. I think it was very clearly written and easy to follow. The yarn I chose for this was Jameson's of Shetland, Heather Aaron in the colorway Pippin. And my main goal for the yarn was I wanted something very grassy green, being that we're going into the spring season. I oftentimes still have to wear 
warm garments because I live in western Wisconsin and it gets very cold here even in the spring. But I wanted to freshen up the color for the spring festive feeling and that's why I went with grass green and I love the color green it's definitely my favorite color and I have been able to get so much use out of it I've been able to wear it with so many different outfits already it's just the perfect shade of green especially for this time of year this yarn was lovely to work with it was super sticky wooly wool yarn and it's not itchy which is an added bonus because the fibers, they aren't super toothy on the edge, so they don't prickle you when you wear it. So I could wear this next to skin. I still tend to layer like a t-shirt underneath, um, but yeah, it's awesome yarn. I believe it is woolen spun. It's pretty lightweight for the size of the garment, and it's very, very warm. So it's trapping a lot of my body heat in the fibers and keeping me very warm as well. And I think my favorite part about this yarn is the dimension in the color. From far away, you may only see green, but when you look at it up close, there's like dark green, orange, red, almost like a navy blue and yellow. There's just so much dimension to this color that I really love. And that is just... One of the many things I love about hand knit garments, I feel like you don't really run across such dimensional yarn in store bought items. Everything's pretty like flat, but when you're working with, you know, obviously specialty made yarn, it just really sets it apart from any store bought garment. And I like choosing a basic pattern with special yarn like this to really let the yarn shine versus the pattern itself. So I think these two paired together turned out very lovely. My next finished object is one that has been a long time in the making, which is kind of silly because all it is is a pair of socks here. I started these I believe last September. They are the Drow Sock by Kaori Katsurata from Lina's 52 Weeks of Socks Volume 2. And I, I don't know what took me so long to make these. I guess I've just been really into garment making and hats and shawls and whatnot, but I finally finished them and I'm so happy because I've been wearing them a few times already and I really do love them. These are more of a around the house style sock for me because as you may see here, the cuff or the leg portion is pretty bulky and it makes for a very slouchy top and then the foot part is nice and fitted. So I could wear these with boots or whatever, but I think they'd be cute with like Birkenstocks or something that kind of shows off the slouchiness and doesn't so much hide it under a boot. Uh, this is a top-down style sock and for the leg portion it's worked in a brioche knit and honestly that's what took the longest time for me. As we know, brioche, it's kind of like knitting twice as much for the same length as if you were to just do stockinette. And these were kind of my travel projects. So if I went to like the brewery or my friend's house or wherever, this was my out and about knitting. And that's the only time I really ever worked on them. I didn't really work on them much at home. So that's why it took also so long to knit these. But I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think they fit my foot very nicely. The pattern was really easy to follow. And yeah, I don't know if I would necessarily knit these again. I do really love them, but there's just so many awesome sock patterns out there that I really want to knit. And these quite aren't like a cult knit for me, like the DRK everyday socks are, but I did really enjoy these and I love how they're looking. In terms of the yarn, I know that this dyer isn't currently dyeing yarn right now. I think it's Forced Fiber Arts. 
I got it from one of my local yarn shops and I can't remember the name of the colorway but I guess it doesn't really matter because you can't really get it anyways but I do like the tonal look of it it kind of gives it a little something extra instead of just being one solid color and this shade of brown just kind of goes with everything I'm wearing which is just it makes for a nice little staple sock so happy to get these done I have been working on the totally tessellated socks by Andrea Mowry that I started in November I'm getting close to finishing those I won't show them off in this podcast because I don't know. Um, but once I get that pair of socks done, I'll be excited to finally cast on something new because it really feels like I've just been working on these two pairs of socks for a very long time at this point. <laughs> but yay, at least I have one of them done so far. I have two whips that I've been actively working on that I'll show you. And the first one I talked about in my last uh, studio chat and that is the Yadviga sweater by Albiona McLaughlin so another one of her lovely patterns as you can see here I finished the body and now I am just working on the sleeves this is knitting up so fast first of all I swatched and in my last studio chat I said that I got gauge and that was a lie I never even actually checked uh, and I ended up needing to go up a needle size, but I'm really happy with the fabric that it came out with. So I'm knitting on a US 9 for the body, and then for the sleeves I always go up a needle size because I do tend to knit my sleeves pretty tight, so it kind of balances it out. So the fact that I'm knitting size 9 and a 10 on the sleeves, it's just whizzing on by. And I think another reason for that is the fact that it is all over color work, as you can see. So it really has been keeping my attention. I tend to get super bored when it comes to the body and it's just plain stockinette. I put it down a lot more often and work on something a little more complex. But since this has been color work the whole way, I have never gotten bored with it, not even with the sleeves, which is really cool. And there's no decreases that I have to like pay attention to with the sleeves. There's something about knitting sleeves when it requires decreases every few inches or rows or whatever that really annoy me. I don't like to keep track of that. I wish I could just knit sleeves straight. And with this particular sweater and the other Albina one that I knit, you don't have to do that. You only decrease at the very end right before you do the hem, which is super nice. And I like the shape of that too, because it gives my arms a little more room to move around in the garment. I did make a few modifications to the sweater. The first one being the coloring. It calls for the neckline to be a contrast color against the like main color, the base color in here. So technically the pattern would have called for this like arctic gray, but I wanted it to be blue and I want the hems and sleeve cuffs to be blue too. I think if I did the gray for the neckline, it would just make the overall garment a little too cold looking and I wanted to warm it up with the navy and I'm happy with how that looks. I really enjoyed doing this neckline. It is using a pico edge and that is something that I have never done before. It's a lot easier than it looks, which is always a fun thing. But the other modifications I made was I lengthened the body quite a bit. I added a whole color strip, color work strip here. It would have ended right here and then I would have done the ribbing and to me that would have just been maybe a little too cropped. I feel like the last few sweaters that I've knit have been super cropped and I just want something a little bit longer and that's why I chose to lengthen it and I think it'll come out to be the perfect length. And yeah, what else? I guess I didn't really make any other modifications to it. I did kind of screw something up. You may notice 
that my short rows are a little off center. So it caused a more blue chunk to come in on this side versus this side is the patterning right away. And I didn't notice that until after I split for sleeves. And at that point I was like, I did all this color work. I do not want to rip back just for this little section. However, I do think it's still a mistake that you can notice across the room. So I need to address it somehow. And right now my plan is to do like a duplicate stitch, like, See how there's this gray stripe right here at the top? I want to add one more gray stripe kind of going around the back. My thought process is if this portion gets filled with more color work, it's still not going to be centered, but it's not going to be as noticeable if you're looking for it. I've never done duplicate stitch before, but I think doing just a plain stripe around the neckline isn't going to be such a big deal. So we'll find out how that turns out. And let's talk about the yarn. So this was my second project that I'm doing in collaboration with Blue Sky Fibers. I'm a Blue Sky maker for 2024. So what that means is they provided yarn support for two projects for me to work on. And this is the second one. This is knit up with their extra yarn, as you can see right here. And it is 55% baby alpaca and 45% fine merino. And because of the alpaca, it has a lot of nice drape and it's super, super soft. It feels like cashmere. You may remember the scout shawl that I made a couple months ago was knit with our 100% baby alpaca and that felt like cashmere and this is no different. The colors that I used were Ocean Deep and Lake Ice. I have never really knit navy blue for myself and I don't ever really knit with a gray color, but something about these two together really was calling to me and I'm really happy with how it's turning out. It's nice to have something a little bit out of the box for what I usually wear, especially in the springtime. I tend to get kind of like a nautical vibe and these colors to me are very nautical, especially since they're water themed in the names. <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think it's turning out very lovely. My goal is to finish this sweater up within this next week, which should allow me plenty of time to still get to wear it before the warm summer temperatures roll on in. My next whip is one that was a very spontaneous cast on and it's kind of a remake in a way. Two years ago I knit this sweater. This is the Forest Key Vest by Teti's Knit Garden or Teti Lutzak. It's an awesome color work v-neck pullover vest and the color works on the back and the front. And I do get a lot of wear with this, but there's quite a few things that I could do again. If I were to remake this, there's a few things that I would do to make it fit and feel even better for me. The first one being, and this was all on me, is choosing a more contrasting yarns. So as you can see, this orangey, color really blends a lot with the brown and you kind of don't get the beautiful color work. You don't see it quite as much. It doesn't pop as much and it's just too bad because the color work is very beautiful and I think it's really cool and a huge reason why I chose to knit this garment in the first place and it just gets quite a bit lost with it. Again, I still love wearing it. It's cool to have a little bit of subtle color work, but I want to make it again with something a lot more contrasting to bring out the color work. The second thing which was again on me was knitting the eye cord around all the edges. I think I knit it just like a hair too tight. So it really cinched up the armholes a lot and a little bit around the neckline too. It's just not as tidy as I know I can make it. So I 
am excited to have the opportunity to redo that again. And then thirdly, I really would like to extend the length of it. This is like super cropped on me. It comes like way above my belly button, which is fine because I would always layer this anyways, but sometimes there's a little bit too much of a gap between the vest and the shirt and then where my pants start I want it all to like kind of be closer together if that makes sense I don't want like too much t-shirt showing under the vest it just the proportions feel weird to me so I am gonna knit it longer this time uh, to kind of accommodate that so I did start the new version and again this was so spontaneous I just I saw these yarns next to each other on my shelf and it just came to me that they would make an awesome forest key vest and I started knitting it up that same day. So I'll show you how far I am. It's not far at all. This is the back side and I finished the color work at the top here and now I'm just knitting down the back side. I hope you can see this. So I'm making the same size as I did before, which I think is like a size three maybe. But again, I'm just gonna knit it longer. But what I'm most excited about is the yarn that I'm using because this is a completely hand-spun garment. I've made hand-spun garments before and now that I'm spinning a lot more, I'm starting to accumulate hand-spun into my knitting shelf. So whenever I have an opportunity to knit a garment with it, I will take it. But this first main color skein is from Onero Care, and I spun this up on my wheel a couple months ago, and it is just absolutely gorgeous how it turned out. This is, another, this is similar to the Jameson of Shetland yarn, where there's just so much colors and dimension when you look at this up close. It's just absolutely beautiful yarn and it's so lovely to knit with it's extremely lightweight and yeah I'm just having a lot of joy knitting this and then the contrast color is this creamy natural white that I spun up using my drop spindle here so I was getting really into drop spindling last summer and I got this yarn it was part of the shave them to save them program that's part of the livestock conservancy group where they encourage you to buy critical breeds to motivate the farmers to continue their hard work on maintaining and keeping these sheep breeds alive but this is gulf coast native from rock mills farm i knit it up as just a two ply and it came out to be like a fingering weight yarn. And I'm actually holding this double against this. This is a little bit thicker. I would say this is like a DK weight. And so I didn't want the color work to get hidden away, like being swallowed up by this. So that's why I'm holding it double. I still have to finish spinning up the rest of this natural colorway on the drop spindles, but I have time. I've just been so distracted with my other spinning, which I will show you in a little bit. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. And I think it'll be a perfect spring garment to layer over t-shirts if I need just a little bit of extra warmth with it. So stay tuned. We will see how this turns out. But already I am loving the contrast. You can see the color work so much better with it. Since we last talked, my spinning rabbit hole has only gotten deeper, specifically with the supported spindles. So I think the last time I was showing you this supported spindle here, where I spun up one of the colorways from Lavender Loon's monthly fiber subscription. and. I know I had more spindles on the way and suddenly I have four in front of me 
with three more on the way in the mail. I went a little out of control with buying spindles, but it is so much more enjoyable for me to spin supported spindle than it is to do suspended or drop spindle or even on my wheel. I still absolutely love spinning on my wheel, but there's something about, I have to set up my wheel in my living room and like bring a dining room chair into the living room as well. And it's really not that big of a problem, but there's something about being able to sit on the couch with the supported spindle in my lap and spin right on my couch where I can just pick it up and set it down a lot easier than I can with a wheel. That just makes it a lot more accessible to me and allows me to spin a lot more than I already would have. And the funny thing is, is spinning on a supported spindle overall takes a lot more time than spinning on a wheel. Spinning on a wheel is a lot faster to spin yarn up. And I don't know, it's made me more appreciate the process of spinning. When I spin on my wheel, I spin to really get the product out. I, Like I said, I like spinning on it, but since it's so fast, I'm just trying to get the fiber all spun up. But when I'm working on the drop spindle or the supported spindle, it's really more enjoyable to just do the process and watch the color changing yarn change as you're winding it up on the cop. It's just more meditative to me and I really enjoy it. I'm sitting here, I'm looking at all my spindles, which I will show you. So I guess we can go in order of what I've been spinning, kind of. We'll start with the monthly subscription. So I have a monthly subscription. I've gotten month two and I'm waiting on month three and I'm wanting to do a combo spin with those three colors. And so far months one and two have been similar enough where they work really well together in a combo spin. And I'm hoping that month three will be the same as well. But even if it's a little bit different, it'll nice to add like a little contrast through the three ply that I plan on making with it. And so I am spinning up two spindles of each colorway and then I'll ply them all together. So I have these two spindles done. This was month one of Lavender Loons. And actually, let me show you, I haven't spun up all of that fiber yet so I can show you what it'll all look like. I know I talked about this in my last studio chat and the theme behind Lavender Loon's monthly fiber club is these little printed images from another Minnesota-based artist called Chimney Smoke. And they're super cute little paintings and she's taking inspiration from the colors when dyeing up the fiber. And so this was the fiber from January, which was based off that photo I just showed you. So I can kind of hold them up side by side here. And I think she did a very lovely job getting the colors out of this into the fiber. So yeah, I'm showing you all of this because obviously you're not gonna see all the reds and other colors when it's spun up like this. And then I started spinning up month two because that then arrived as well. Oh, I should say too, this spindle here is a Mirkwood that I bought secondhand off of Ravelry. And I do love how it spins. I have since learned, well, I knew this going into it. I'm not really supposed to wind the cop up this high. You're supposed to kind of stop it more at this point. So it got really tricky to spin towards the end because there wasn't much for my fingers to grasp at the end here. But you'll see with these other ones that I've gotten better with that. So I then spun up one spindle so far of month two. This spindle here is Viscount Wood Turning. You can find them on Etsy. This was really hard to spin at first because it's so lightweight and each time I flicked it, it only would 
rotate like two revolutions but once you add fiber to it it weighs down a little bit more and it starts to spin a lot better and I started spinning on another one of this month on an Enid Ashcroft spindle that I got this is easily one of my favorites that I have here the woodwork on it is just absolutely beautiful I just think all of this is so pretty and it spins like a dream. Normally I flick on my left hand, not my right hand, um, and I draft on my right hand, but yeah, so I guess I can show you like that. And so I'll show you the full color range of month two. First of all, I have the inspiration photo here which is just another lovely perk to the whole subscription is you get these beautiful prints as well that I'm excited to hang up around my house because it definitely goes with the vibe of my decor so here is month two's inspiration So here's month two. It's very similar to month one, but just like a little bit different in the colors. But I, I think they're going to spin up together super nice. And it won't be too different from each other where it just makes some crazy yarn. Even so, that would be cool. But yeah, I'm very much enjoying that. I should be getting month three pretty soon here, I think. And once I spin up two spindles of that, I'll ply them all together and see how they turn out. And I did just want to show you one more spindle that I got because it's another one of my favorites. And this is from the Spindle Shop. They make absolutely gorgeous spindles they're based out of Australia and the bowl that I have here is from them as well it's a double-sided bowl so on this side there's more of a shallow divot to put your spindle on and then on the other side there's a really deep one which works well for this particular spindle it just makes it even more supported and it's not bouncing around quite as much so I, I love these. Not only are they lovely to spin on, but they are just beautiful works of art to have around. And I just absolutely appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into it. The whole thing is just lovely. If you have been thinking about starting Supported Spindle, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm having a lot of fun. And I'm also excited because Andrea Maori is doing another 100 day challenge and this time it's 100 days of long draw and it starts the day this video comes out actually. And when I spin on these supported spindles, I'm naturally doing a long draw as it is. So I don't really have to change anything that I do and I spin every single day. So I get to participate in this challenge without it even really being a challenge to me because it's something that I already do. But I love the community that it brings out. And honestly, her last 100 days of spindle spinning, spindle spinning was what got me into all of this because I could not stop looking at all of the people's photos that were participating in it and seeing the beautiful yarn they spin up and the spindles and everything. I just had to do it. So yeah, I'm just, I'm having so much fun. And that's not all that I have to show you for spinning. So while I was waiting for month two of the Lavender Loon Club, I, I just couldn't wait and I started spinning up a bat that I bought from Madison Montese. She had been playing around on her drum carter that she got and spinning up all of these beautiful bats and did a drop of different bats and I like immediately bought one and I'm so excited. And Madison, I really hope you do some in the future because they are just gorgeous and lovely to spin with. And I think I've shown this before, but look how beautiful this is. This fiber here is 60% fin, 20% merino, and 20% silk. 
And that's what the, the silk is, the pink pieces that you see in here. And the silk was so fun to spin up with it. I don't know, I'm just, I love this so much. And so I really wanted to get as much yardage as I possibly could out of this because this is about 50 grams. I decided to ply it with an entirely different color, so another combo spin, I guess. And there are some subtle golden warm tones in here. I'm not sure if you can see that. And that's the color I decided to get for the second ply. I went on Etsy and I just searched for fiber bats. I really enjoy spinning with fiber bats. They're really easy to pull the pieces off. And um, I should also say that I spin from the fold. So what I do is I, I pull a chunk off like this and then I fold it between my fingers here and then I draft from the tip of my finger. And that seems to really work for me. It's similar to maybe a roll lag in the way that it drafts out of the like fiber chunk. I don't have any roll lags and I don't have any carters either. I do want to get some hand carters eventually so I can make some of my own roll lags because they seem really nice to spin with. That's why I like spinning with these bats because they're just really easy to work with. Anyways, I spun up two spindles of these and I plied them together so I can go ahead and show you and this is what I have here. It's about 50 grams of a DK weight and yeah I think it's super cute. I have no idea what I'm going to make with these yet. I'm going to end up having two of these once I'm all done but it was really fun. And again, I love the way that just the little pink silk pieces kind of stand out from it. It just gives it something a little bit more exciting than just the teal and the yellow together. But yeah, I, it's just bouncy, lightweight, fun yarn. Another cool thing about supported spindle is it's woolen spun. I don't I don't know if you can spin on supported worsted. So I know on a wheel it can be tricky to kind of get a woolen spun yarn if you don't have a lot of experience with it. So it's nice to be able to get just woolen spun out of my spindles. So I have this bouncy, beautiful yarn here. I did buy some more <laughs> fiber. There was a Fiber drop from Little Fern Fibers. I think she used to have a YouTube channel that she posted regularly on and I really miss it. But she's still dyeing fiber and I was able to catch one of her drops and I got two braids here. Here's one of them. And the second one looks pretty similar but it has some slightly brighter greens in it. So together they make just a really fun combination. And again, I think I'm going to do a combo spin with these. I have a little bit less of this particular one than I do of this one. So I'm going to have to maybe make like little nestlets or something and kind of combine them in with this. But I have time. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to spin these up yet. I just, I love looking at them. They're super springy and fun and I'm just very excited to spin with these. And I'm gonna spin these on my supported spindle as well. I do have some Onero Care fiber on the way. I think I'll probably get it next week sometime. I was able to catch the latest drop and I ended up buying three bats of fiber. It should be enough fiber to make a sweater quantity, which I already have a sweater planned for it right now, but I'll show you that next time because I'll probably have it by next time. So yeah, a ton of spinning. <laughs> That's all I've been buying and it's all I've been wanting to do. At this point, I feel like I'm a spinner first and a knitter second, which is really funny because when I first started watching videos on how to spin 
or maybe it was in the yarn texture book. They said that's what happens with a lot of spinners. They become spinners first and knitters second. And I'm like, no way, I'll never not be a knitter second. But it's happened. I think, I think I'm a spinner first. And it's bringing me so much joy. If you can't tell on my face, I just smile so much when I talk about spinning. I love it so much. I have been sewing a little bit and I'm wearing one of my finished objects actually. This is the puffy dress but with the blouse hack by Tropical Research which is a pattern designer that I've been eyeing for over a year now and I love the style of all of his patterns. They're very flowy and kind of beachy and they just really make me think of summer and springtime. I always get the itch to sew a bunch in preparation for spring and summer because it's just easier to wear handmade garments that are sewn in the summer than having everything that's knit. I know there's plant-based fibers and stuff like that, but sometimes I just want to wear flowy fabric. I love this blouse so much. I think I probably say this about everything that I finish making, but it really is one of my favorite pieces that I've ever sewn and I think just the shape of it is so me. I love the detail of the ruffle at the top and the sleeves on it I think are just really cool. I like the volume of it but the fabric I chose still makes it nice and drapey where it's not like too poofy but yeah I am just very pleased with how this turned out and the fabric that I used for this was dead stock fabric that I got from a website, I think it's called fabricmart.com. I bought a bunch of fabric last winter and I still have quite a bit of it because I haven't really been sewing as much as I want to. I was happy I was able to get one of these sewn up and I think it's like a cotton blend. It's super soft feeling and again it just has lovely drape. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I do have to fix the arm a little bit. So with the closures of the sleeve, I like how it opens up a little bit right here and then you can either do a standard buttonhole and button or you could do a tie or what I did was the little button loop with the button and the loop I made on this side is a little too big so I have it fastened together with a uh, light bulb pin and I'm just gonna sew the loop down because I don't really ever need to unbutton it my hands slide in and out just fine so yeah I just need to get around to sewing it down and that way it doesn't keep popping open I want to make this as a dress as well and I already have fabric picked out for it it was also from that big haul of fabric that I bought over a year ago and it's this right here so it's this kind of crinkly light pink fabric with these very subtle silver gray pin striping throughout and there's some white in between there too so just a nice flowy fabric honestly I do not know what kind of fabric this is. It's not quite linen. It does feel like maybe there's a little bit of polyester in it, which isn't my favorite. I really do want to kind of focus on all natural fibers, but what can you do? It was dead stock fabric, so I didn't really want to pass it up, but I do want to make the full dress version of it. I can't decide if I want to make it long sleeve or if I just want to make it a short sleeve. Part of me wants to make it a short sleeve for summer and then just have the long dress and I think that would be really cute, especially because the sleeves took a really long time. It took me a whole night just to do the sleeves alone and so it would be nice to not have to do that again, as much as I love how they turned out. But yeah, that's my plan with this. And then I did mention in my spring inspo video, my last video, that I wanted to make the archer pants by Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. And originally I was going to buy some fabric to make that, but I'm 
budgeting myself and I kind of spent all my fun money on spinning stuff, which means I don't really have money left over for fabric. But I do have a stash of fabric. One of you lovely viewers sent me a ton of fabric a couple months ago and I decided that I'm gonna use this particular fabric, which was in that bundle of fabric that was sent to me, to make the matchy matchy pants. This is a nice canvas, like a lightweight canvas material, which I think will be really good for the pants. And I think the color is gorgeous. It's like a pinky brown, and I think it'll just look really nice with a lot of things in my wardrobe. So I was playing around with because you have the option to do a different color for the inseam as well as the pockets. But I think for the first pair that I make, I really want it to be just like a very classic, plain style with the intent to make kind of funky pairs in the future. So I think I'm going to make everything in just this one color here to be more of a neutral pant to go with everything and again I'll make wacky ones down the road but yeah I'm excited so this is going to be my next project I think before I re-sew this as a dress um, so stay tuned maybe I'll have it done the next time we talk I have been doing a little bit of weaving again, not a ton to show you, but I did finally dress my loom for a new project. I decided I wanted to do one more plain weave project before I dive into learning about like twill and overshot and all of that. Uh, just to get more confident with using the loom more than how easy it is to plain weave. Like I, I have that down, but Again, just learning the loom has been kind of a big learning curve for me, but I think with just this one more project, it'll work out well. I originally was going to make a new table runner for my dining room table. However, I don't think I made the warp long enough, so it might end up being that I just chop it in half and have two more hand towels. We'll see how it turns out in the end, but I will have to take you up to the bedroom because that's where I store the loom and we'll take a look at what I'm weaving. Okay, here is what we've got going on. It's, again, like I said, just a plain weave, so over and under on a warp. That's just pretty simple. and. I wanted to make like a buffalo plaid or a gingham style fabric. I thought it would be really nice for spring and summer. And like I said, originally I wanted to do a table runner, but again, I don't know if it's going to be long enough. But yeah, this is like how far I am underneath like that too. And it's going by super fast now that I have it all dressed on the loom. Uh, plain weave just really whizzes on by and it's really fun to see the colors kind of come together it's very satisfying and mindless work so maybe by the next time we chat i will have this all done that's the hope at least <laughs> As the weather warms up, I'm starting to get a bit more busy. It was like 70 degrees a couple weeks ago and I put out all my porch furniture and the dogs were out there and we we're having a great time and then it snowed and then the temperatures dropped and it's like winter again. But now the snow is all melting and I am starting to kind of tune up my bike a bit, my road bike, and I'm getting really excited to go out and ride that. It's not quite dry enough to mountain bike yet, but I know that's just right around the corner. And I've been getting really involved with the birding club that I mentioned that I joined. We did some buckthorn removal a few weeks ago, and I went to one of their monthly meetings. This particular one was about uh, the challenges of uh, conserving grassland birds and what needs to happen for that. And it's just been really fun. And I'm doing a crane count in a couple weeks where we go out at 5.30 a.m. 
I have a meeting spot along the river and we count cranes for a couple of hours. So I think it's going to be really fun. And I've been just enjoying that and all of the people that are involved with that club a lot. It's just been bringing a lot of joy to my life. Everyone's just so nice and welcoming. I've also been listening to a new audiobook, or new to me, I should say. I get most of my book recommendations from Maggie from the Sonder Knitting Podcast. If you haven't watched her stuff yet, I highly recommend her podcast. She makes really cool, inspiring knitted garments and she's a great spinner too so it's really fun watching her but again she makes really good recommendations the book i'm reading is the vanished birds by simon Jimenez, and it's kind of like a sci-fi very much in the future book so far i am only like a third way into the book and i don't really know how to give a whole synopsis of it yet without maybe potentially giving away information. I don't know, but I'm enjoying it so far. And yeah, I've been watching a lot of PBS still. I finished All Creatures Great and Small, which makes me really sad, but thankfully they are signed for two more seasons at least coming up. I started watching Masterpieces version of Little Women. I, it's like a three episode three or four short series. I think I'm halfway through the second episode, but that one's been super nice. And I've been watching a lot of Nova and Antiques Roadshow. I just, I love PBS. It is just really nice TV to have on, especially, I don't know, just sometimes in the background too. I'm starting to plan out my garden for this season. I have two raised planters in my backyard and I, grew some vegetable in it last year and I learned a lot from that and I'm excited to do it again this year and the years going forward. I want to add some berry bushes to my yard and plant a bunch of native beautiful like decorative plants in my front yard. I've got a lot of plans for the gardening coming up. So with all of these things happening, it made me sit down and think about what the future of my channel looks like. So if you're a YouTuber, you know how much time goes into recording these videos, but also editing the videos and like writing out the description and making the thumbnail and all of that. It's very, very time consuming. And sometimes it can take up a good chunk of my weekends, which normally would be reserved for doing all of these other things. And so with the pattern of my videos that I've been putting out, I've always done like a studio chat and then two weeks later, kind of like a random style video like spring inspiration or these are the best patterns for a sweater. I don't know, stuff like that. And um, I think for the summer, I'm going to take it a step back and just do the monthly studio chat. So starting now, through August, I'm just gonna update once a month, which will allow me to have just more time for my making in general and all of the other activities that kind of come with the summertime. And yeah, and then I plan to probably pick it back up a bit more come fall when things settle down a bit and I have more time to record my videos. But so I'm still gonna be here all through summer, just maybe not quite as much as I have been this past year. And I think that's gonna work out very well for me. I still love making these videos and interacting with all of you in like the comments and also over on Instagram and stuff. And I do still plan to be very active on Instagram. So if you wanna keep up with what I'm making a bit more, I would recommend checking that out if you have an Instagram account. I'm not really much on Ravelry. It's just, I don't wanna be on too many different platforms. So I really only use Ravelry to like look for patterns and maybe for people selling off spindles. But 
yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for always sticking around. I really enjoy the community that we have here on YouTube, and I'm excited to keep that going for years to come. So if you made it this far, thank you. If you like this style of video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, welcome. Please consider subscribing and you won't miss out on any future content that I make. But I think I'm going to leave it at this and we will chat again in May. I hope you have a lovely April and I will see you next time. Bye.